I like that song. Shorter than the others. Didn't give us enough time to prepare, but that's all right. Chris, how are we looking? I'm close. I'm close, Dave. This is like, there. This there is like me One, pulling in someone for an interview. Boom. Yeah, give me 30 <laughs> seconds. It's always 30 <laughs> seconds. Pin it. We're ready to go, Dave. Let's do it. The Big Play Reflog Show is brought to you by ShackNews.com. Shack News is the place to be for all your gaming news, guides, walkthroughs, interviews, and reviews, including their latest Shack Chat, where they debate which NBA player they would most like to see make an appearance in your favorite video game. And be sure to get even more involved in the gaming community by posting or commenting with the Shack News Cortex and Shack News Reader. So if you're a gamer, Shack News is the site for you. Check them out on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. At the handle at Check News and at checknews.com. Okay, do you need medical attention? Yeah. What, what is wrong? I don't know. I know that damn doctor. Cut back by John. He's to the 10. He's still running to the 5. He dips outside. He's doing it. Welcome to the big play. Vlog show. Today is Monday, July 19th. Happy Monday. I'm your host, Big Play Dave, alongside my main man in the Labatt jersey, Mr. Chris McNeil. How are you, sir? Good, Dave. Got a big week planned. Yeah, what do you got? Going to Cedar Point this weekend with the kiddos. I'm pretty excited about that. Nice. And it's not appointment only now, right? You're free, right, free for right. Free. We got our two day tickets. We're going Saturday. We're going Sunday. We got it both for the water park as well as the regular park. So it'll be a good time, Dave. Heck yeah! I haven't been there in probably fifteen years. We've been talking about going this summer. Oh, go back! Man. I got to go back. Go back. They got some new rides that are awesome. It's I think the newest one was ones. Millennium Force when I went. Oh God, you got to go back. <laughs> That's crazy. You got to go back there. It's a good time. <laughs> There's the verified guy, Mister Nick Padone. Have you been to Cedar Point lately? Uh, it's probably been a year or two years, probably two years for me. Not okay. as long as you, Dave. Well, it's been I've two been, years for like everybody. Yeah. <laughs> but I've been, I've been we on like something go on in between. Yeah. I've been on the new rides though. I like the new rides and stuff. You, you got to get back and check it out. All right. I'll take the kids or we'll do an outing. Yeah. It's fun. I should do a show outing. <laughs> a show yes. Outing. Live from the power tower. Is that still around? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. All right, Remember yeah, the demon right. drop? The oh, demon yeah. drop was the best. You, that you, is you, most likely. <laughs> that is definitely not around anymore. You'd, you'd put a penny on your lap and float. Yeah. yeah. We, w- we actually went there in school. Our physics teacher brought us up there. We did a field trip and no we did kidding. that experiment on there and had to write it up. Oh, that's awesome. The they, best yeah, thing about still... the, the demon drop, though, was back years ago, uh, I, I think the braking mechanism didn't work <laughs> and it flew off the tracks and through <laughs> the front gate. Sounds about you know right. That? I did not know that. I'm not. Yeah, that I'm, happened. The demon drop. Good no, times, man. All right, I'm not going to go. All right, we got a great show tonight. <laughs> we should probably start talking some sports. Uh, it it's good stuff. We're going to kick it out with Power Rank Monday, presented by Labatt Blue. We're talking the most exciting plays in sports. Top three. Not talking a specific play that happened. Talking about a play generic in sports. All right, we're going to rank those. Then we're going to get clearing in. clearing the bar and pole vaulting. No, no, number, number one, on one number yeah. one. They, speaking of pole vaulting, Chris, our featured hey. interview, great transition, uh, Olympic pole vaulter, Katie Najat. 
joining the show, local Clevelander. She is on her way to Tokyo to win the gold medal. This is going to be awesome. Can't, right. can't wait to talk Getting to some her. show karma before she goes across the pond. You got to. You got to. Then we're going to get into the Cleveland Sports Headlines. This, we're giving away a Kevin Mack mini helmet. So someone in the comments was like, wait, who, who is, is Kevin Ke Mack? I was like, what is wrong who is with Kevin you? Mack? Oh, I got to go back in the comments. I got to go address some things, right some wrongs. Who is Kevin Mack? Yeah, get out of here. Can't call yourself a Cleveland or not. So I Kevin. had a heart attack after I sent that tweet out because I thought I had spelled Kevin Mack's name wrong. How do you spell Kevin Mack wrong? That, that's that's what the easiest I, name in the world. Yeah, so that's why I like freaked out when I saw that comment. And then I scrolled up and like read over every letter. And I'm like, okay, I didn't do anything wrong. Like This guy <laughs> literally just does not know who Kevin Mack is. That's right. So we will give away a Kevin Mack signed mini helmet, and then we will do our announcement of the Flogsies winners 2021. Can't wait. Can't wait. Can't wait. And then we will do best and worst tweets of the week. But let's kick it off. It is time for some Power Rank Monday. <laughs> Power Rank Monday. All right, Power Rank Monday presented by Labatt Blue. Go drink some Labatt Blue. Last week, we saw penalty kicks in the Euro Championship. Uh, we had a home run derby. We had multiple playoffs in golf. A lot going on. So we're going to Power Rank top three most exciting plays in sports. We'll kick it off with my number three. Number three. Chris, I'm going two outs, bottom of the ninth, bases loaded, full count. How many times did you do that in the backyard? You're like just hitting the ball, and that's always the count. That's always the situation. Oh, my And then God, it, yeah. you're on the line, right? Yeah. That and three, two, one, buzzer beater. <laughs> that's right. They're all buzzer beaters, no matter how many times you lose the dribble. It's always three, two, 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 one, <laughs> one. <laughs> yes, a tradition like none other. But yeah, that, but any walk off, I'm with you there on three. Anytime it's a walk off situation like that, man. That's yeah, something. either way, even if you're pitching, man, like to win in that situation on the other side of the ball is incredible yeah. as well. So that's you. You can't really beat that one. But my number two, you always got to make sure you got the radio on so you can listen to Tom Hamilton in those situations. Oh yeah. Oh, we're back. Full effect. Yeah. All right. Number two, I'm going with a fake punt. Not not Jamie Gillen's last fake punt, but just the fake punt in general, because you just you never see it coming and it just throws you completely off. And you're like, OK, what is going on? Love the fake punt. Sometimes if it's not executed well, neither did anybody else on the line. Very true. <laughs> <laughs> that was the problematic one. That's right. That is right. Um, and then my number one. Zero uno. I'm going back to football. I'm going fourth and goal when you go for it. There's no better anticipation of what's going to happen right there. Fourth and goal, going for the win. Love it. Nick, ballsy play. Or Chris, ballsy call. Yeah, right? Yeah, you got to have balls if you're a coach calling that one. Chris, top three. My number three. Number three. Now, I went. Did you guys see Space Jam? I did. I, I went and saw no. it. I went and saw it by myself first. I know. That's how pathetic I am. <laughs> um, wasn't doing anything on Friday night. Didn't have the kids. And I took the kids to see it on Sunday. Uh, but it's all LeBron all the time, of course. The opening montage kind of brought a tear to my eye because uh, they go through, you know, his whole career and, of course, the championship in Cleveland. So that brings me to my number three, which is the chase down block. LeBron's chase down block. He's really made it kind of his signature move anymore i mean a lot of people do it but man the frequency he does it and just the the technical expertise and speed at which he can get to that ball from behind is just amazing has made it one of the most exciting plays for me in all the sports so that's my number three love it my number two number two Dave, you kind of hit on it with the fake punt, but anytime there's special teams, man, special team scores are always big. And I'm not talking just a field goal. I'm talking about scoring a touchdown. You know, I, I saw the video again last week. I love it when this gets brought up. The App State 
blocking the punt or blocking the field goal (laughs) against Michigan, returning it to the house. I mean, in their house, in the big house, I special teams, uh, plays like that. Just always get me Eric Metcalf taking back two against the Steelers, you know, everything that Cribs has done throughout his entire career as a return man. Those are awesome. Of course, I would be uh, negligent if I did not bring up Gerald the Ice Cube McNeil and his fantastic returns and equally fantastic last name as well, Dave. Yes, dude. Josh Cribbs got us through like eight years of bad football. He did. You'd always have to watch it. You'd always have to watch it when they were kicking to us because of Josh Cribbs. My number one. Dave, we just had a British Open this weekend, a super soft British Open. It was very weak. It really could have been an email. Agreed. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, it was bad, man. It was bad. Um, it just didn't bring any intrigue. It was 80 degrees out there. I mean, the British Open is supposed to be great because the weather is bad, and these guys get beaten up. That's why I watched the majors, to get these guys get to watch these guys get beat up like you or I would on any given Sunday out there on the golf course. You want to see the pros get beat up like that and try and overcome it. And that's the way the British Open is supposed to be. It wasn't that way. Uh, People were like scrambling for sunscreen on Sunday. (laughs) That's not the way this thing is supposed to be. Um, But nonetheless, that does bring me to my number one. My most exciting thing in sports is the hole-in-one. Dave, have you ever had a hole-in-one? I had one last year. My only golf outing. Of last Very year, nice. hole in Very one. Nice. Have I ever told you how many I've got? You have not, and I will not tell you how I got mine. But go was, ahead. <laughs> was it was it was a windmill involved in yours, Dave? <laughs> no, it was not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, so I I've legit got had one. four. I've Are had you four serious? Holes four holes in one. Yeah. Holy crap. Not bad, huh? One of them was at Harbor Town too. No, that's kidding. very legit one. Yeah. yeah what, so what's that, the that what's right the up. span on that? Huh? When when was your first one? When was your last one? My first one, I was like in high school. I okay. want to say, yeah, I was in high school, junior or senior year, and my last one was like ten years ago. That so, is wild. So you're due. Yeah, I'm due. <laughs> That's right. And thank you for noticing, Nick. You're I also welcome. got. To, I'm due to go out back on the golf course too. <laughs> hey, we're <laughs> doing kids, the. It's, it's very difficult. Hey, we're, we're doing the Dave, outing. I think we're set, man. Yeah, we got a labat outing on Wednesday. Let's do it. Next week, I'm going to get a hole in one. If I do, I'm calling my shot. There's my, there's my call of the week right there. there Hot is. take. That's right. Hole in one, going to call it next week at the Labatt outing with Dave. That's <laughs> my list. I haven't even had a hole in one in putt-putt. That doesn't surprise me. Nick, what's your list? <laughs> All right. This shouldn't surprise you either because this is pretty off the wall. My number three. Number three. I went with special teams as well, but in a little bit of a different fashion than you guys did. My number three, I went with a well-executed punt. I'm talking about the kind of punt that they pin perfectly at the one. I don't hate that. That's it's Dude, like that's kind of boring. To it's be like it's boring. Like coffin corner, right? Chris, have you? It's, yeah. Chris, who's talking right now? I don't know. He yeah, he likes just... watching sports by himself. He's never gotten Uber Eats. I just did. I just did this week. He's Mr. <laughs> Fundamentals over here. He no, just likes to see the game played the right way. Th- I mean, that's an exciting play. It's like oddly satisfying when they pin it at the one, especially like, oh, it looks like it's about to go into the end zone. But then at the yeah. last minute, they bat it out and pin it at the one. That's a good that's one. That's exciting. That's a good number and, like, three. His number, his number three is a 13-pitch walk. He just <laughs> loves that when the batter's able to really work a count deep. Just keeps battling. <laughs> That's right. He's battling. He's fouling them off, baby. Can you imagine if that actually was? All right. My number two is actually cool. Number two. As opposed to the rest of his list, which is crap. <laughs> All right. My number two is a walk-off home run. Yes. I just feel like you can't beat that, especially at Progressive yeah. Field, the way that they do it. You know, the fans get into it. You got John Adams banging on the drum. You know if that baby goes yard, you're going to see the fireworks right away. And the Indians always, you know, really – rally around i know that's like so cliche because that's their thing but they rally around home plate and they you know they're oh, yeah. throwing the gatorade cups it's just super cool to see walk off homers especially in the summer like that's what i look forward to when i watch baseball so that's my number two nick who hugging dre yeah who are your favorite players to to watch hit a walk off so this is this is an interesting one i actually have a favorite walk off ever and it's it's that Tom Hamilton, Jason Giambi. Yes, yeah. that's what I, I was, we were going to say. I was going to go with yeah. that. 
that's the cool that's just the coolest yeah. one like i could still listen to that and i just get chills and it's jason jambi of all people like we had francisco lindor with like the santa maria call and like you know all the memories throughout the 2016 2017 with the uh jay bruce walk-offs and stuff like yeah. that but something about that jambi well it's because jambi was like 40 too i know and it was the second time that we did it you know like within that span and like Yep. God, Hammy was just fired up. That's an awesome call. Heck yeah. Good good one. All right. And my number one. Numero uno. Dave alluded to this in his list. It's the classic. You're in the driveway. Three, two, one, buzzer beater. It's just cool. I grew up playing basketball. I'm a basketball You still guy do that in the driveway. I know you I do. Still do. I did it in my driveway probably about 30 minutes before I jumped on the show. <laughs> It's 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 just the coolest thing. It's the coolest part of sports. My favorite buzzer beater is the is LeBron's against Orlando. I see where he Young went out and I got Joe Andy. Tate, Joe Tate, Craig Elo against right. the Utah Jazz. I was right at that game. Christmas. Yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus, yeah. and he hails from Lubbock, Texas. <laughs> Joe Tate, that was fantastic. That I was, was sitting little... with my dad in the car at Acme Click back in the day. Oh, that is that is awesome. That's a great call. Yeah. We, we've been so blessed. And I saw it was just Jim Donovan's birthday yesterday. Yeah. We are so blessed in this town. I think it's just because it's like a, a hat tip to like the passion that the people have here for their teams. We just have the best local announcers in all of sports. The fact that we have Jim Don, we, at one point we had Jim doing the Browns, Hammy doing the Indians, and the late Fred McLeod doing the Cavs, and some of his passionate LeBron calls along yeah. the way, and then Joe Tate who came before him. It's just we're, we're, it's crazy. No other town could say that, I feel like. I agree. I agree. That's my list, though. Those are good lists. Thanks, to everyone, in the comments for your list. Get those in. We'll read them off. Uh, shout out WJP Stats, Wayne, Ham Illegal. Good stuff there. It is interview time. We are bringing on a Olympian gold medal future winner here. Are you ready? Let's do it. All right. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Ready on the line, we have Team USA Olympian, local Clevelander, the one and only Katie Najat. How Hi. are you? <laughs> hey guys, good. How are you? We're doing great. Welcome to the show. Thanks for for joining us for a little bit here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So first of all, we got to start here. How how the heck are you feeling? Uh, we saw on <laughs> Twitter you had food poisoning. You were going through yeah. a a, an allergic reaction. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, I'm feeling really good now, but it was pretty rough there for a few days. <laughs> um, but I feel like this entire year has kind of just been like, let's just throw everything in the kitchen sink at her. And so <laughs> that it just I feel like it wouldn't be this year if I didn't know something happened right before the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Speaking of that, like, what's it been like the lead up to the 2020 Olympics for you? Gosh, it's been long. Gosh, it's been crazy. Yeah, it's long. It's been everything that you pretty much wouldn't expect it to be. Um, but I'm just thrilled that it is finally going through and that I get to be on the team and it was all worth it. But yeah, it was last year was just a lot of training with no competitions. And then at the very end of the season, they threw in a bunch. Um, and I ended up having a good year. Um, but you just, we didn't really know what to expect. And then this year I got COVID and then got over COVID, but had lingering side effects from COVID for a long time and then got over that. And then my poles broke <laughs> and then I fixed that. So it's just been a very roller coaster year and a half, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to say the least, That's, yeah. that is wild. So what's, what's the timeline leading up to this, this week when, when, when everything starts up? So I'll leave Sunday, next Sunday. Okay, um, okay. And yeah, so just train 
uh, you know, as normal as I can for the next week. And then I don't really know what to expect when I get there, but I know there's going to be a lot of, you know, regulations and rules to follow. And I'm just going to do everything in my power to follow all the rules and, you know, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully be out on the field. But I mean, I, it's a long way from now until actually competing with, you know, people testing positive and, yeah. you know, who knows what. So, well, we will be here in Cleveland drinking beers, watching you. So right. are, th are there any local establishments where we're having watch parties? Well, yes. Um, there is a small dive bar in yes. Olsen Falls called Fat Little Buddies. Granted, it is invite, but I think I could get you guys on that VIP. <laughs> there we go. Um, <laughs> but it's going to be at like 630 in the morning. So it's going to be like a kegs and eggs kind of situation. <laughs> um, We've been there. It's all right. This is fantastic. <laughs> I was this like, I think people do the same thing going to Muni lot. So it's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's scratching us right where we itch right here. Oh, yeah. 630 a.m. <laughs> Get up, drink, watch her ride the pole. It's I our mean, wheelhouse. <laughs> it's going to be fantastic. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, what else? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so what have they told you? What kind of guidance do you get from like Team USA as you go through this process, even even for travel and things? It's it's something that obviously we're never going to be exposed to yeah. um, as very far from being Olympians. I know big surprise to you, but uh, how does that work and what does that relationship look like and, and what will that be like from here until you actually compete? Yeah. I mean, I know like just things and obviously I haven't been on a team before, so I don't know what normal protocols would be. I'm sure it would, there would be a lot of them, but yeah. you have to send in your itinerary well in advance. I actually had to have my flights planned before I even made the team, which is, if you know me at all, I'm very much like a knock on wood, like don't, you know, get too excited kind of person. So that I, I hated that, but so you had know, to book it. You had to book it in advance. Oh, yeah. And yeah. As a you had to tell them I was a Clevelander. That's just against the way we think. You know? Thank you. That goes against everything I've ever been taught as a Browns fan. <laughs> <You> just, <laughs> until the last second takes off, you, anything can happen. Um, but yeah, so um, I'm getting emails pretty much every day, but it's just, yeah. I have to take two COVID tests before I leave, like in very certain time frames, they give us at home tests to take. And then when we get there, you're going to be in the airport for anywhere from four to six hours. And then you, you know, you fill out all this paperwork, you get another COVID test, and then they take you to an area where you kind of quarantine for a couple of days and you were able to train, thank goodness. And that's really all I need to do. But normally we'd have a whole training camp. You'd be there for a couple of weeks in advance, but this is pretty much getting, get out. Um, norm I'd, I think most people like to explore and kind of vacation with their families afterwards. And that's just not going to happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a business trip. It's truly a business yeah. trip this way for you, isn't it? And I know you're, yeah. you're going to be training. You're going to be competing. You, you won't be there for the opening ceremonies, obviously. Uh, will you be doing any of the pageantry stuff around it? The closing ceremonies, will there be any of that stuff? Or are you just in there to, to basically win gold for us? I, knock on wood. Um, knock on wood. I, 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 <laughs> no, I, there is an opening ceremonies and a closing ceremonies, but everything I've been told is you have to leave as pretty much two days after your final is over. Um, and I was only allowed in, I think about a week in advance. And so that wouldn't have been in time for opening ceremonies anyways. So I mean, there are going to be some athletes that get to go to one or the other. Um, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what that looks like and which athletes those are, but I'm pretty sure it's no track and field athletes from the U.S. and maybe no U.S. athletes at all. I'm not sure. Wow. So take us through your career. How did you get started in pole vaulting? and What brought you to the point you're at right now where you're an Olympian and you're representing your country? So I started when I was 12 years old, seventh grade. Um, it was the first year we could do sports for our school. And so when they took the middle schoolers out to the high school, I saw the high schoolers doing it and I just knew I needed to try it. It looked like the coolest thing ever. And I was a gymnast when I was little. So I loved anything, upper body strength, adrenaline. I was always climbing on things I shouldn't have been. So it was just <laughs> kind of the perfect <laughs> perfect thing for me. <laughs> and yeah, I worked my way to being a state champion my senior year of high school. 
And then I went to the University of Dayton for two years and then transferred to Ashland University, um, small D2 school. Yeah. And I graduated from there. I was a two-time national champion um, and had the national record for a little bit. And then spent a couple years in Knoxville, Tennessee. And that went well. But when I didn't make the team in 2016, I knew I needed a big change. And um, I reached out to my now coach, Brad Walker. He was a two-time U.S. champion, or I'm sorry, two-time world champion, two-time Olympian. He had the American record at the time. He had just retired. And I reached out to him and said, are you interested in coaching elites. I heard that he was, he took the job at Washington state as the jumps coach there. And this is, this is according to him. Um, but he said he wanted to kind of further his college coaching career, but he had me send him videos just to kind of shut me up. <laughs> he, said, he said, um, and again, this is, these are his words. He said he would have been dumb if he didn't take me on. Um, so oh, yep. I take that as a big compliment and Heck also yeah. that I was doing a lot wrong. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but he took me on and, and I improved, you know, a foot with him, which at this stage is pretty incredible. And he took me from being a good pole vaulter and, you know, Olympic level athlete to being, you know, the best, one of the best ever in the sport. So he's pretty incredible himself, um, to do that. So <laughs> but that's kind of, we moved to Atlanta, um, in June of 2019. So okay. that's where I'm at now. Wow. And one of the things I gleaned from your, from your Twitter account, actually in your, um, your pin tweet right now is your late father has been a big inspiration for you throughout your career. And you, you mentioned writing his, his name on your shoes and you touch him before but you touch your shoe before, you know, you're about to go in for a big vault. So t talk a little bit about that. What's, what's that meant to you? And, and what do you be thinking about as you kind of get into this Olympic mode now um, with your father at the back of your mind? Yeah, he, I mean, he was as supportive as a parent could be. Um, he was always at all of my sporting events growing up. Um, and he he didn't know anything about pole vault, which was kind of great because as a teenage girl, the last thing you want <laughs> is your dad telling you what to do in anything. Um, so, um, you sound like my golfer. daughter right now. <laughs> yeah. Saying, I apologize. Dad, shut up. She plays me. basketball. She's just shut up, dad. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's the worst. I'm so sorry. We, we she will grow out of it. <laughs> she does it right. um, <laughs> your lips to God's ears. We'll see about that, Katie. If not, I'm coming back for you. Yeah. Blame me. Um, so it was kind of nice because like in golf, for example, he was a great golfer and I couldn't be told anything by him in golf. Um, but I just, he got me set up with the clubs that really gave me a solid foundation in the sport. And it was fun because he was learning with me. So when he would tell me things, it didn't feel like he was, you know, telling me what to do as a dad. It was just us talking about pole vault and, and so it was, you know, when he passed, it was, it was tough for vaulting, but I knew that there was never a question of wanting to quit. It was, okay, I need to do this for him now. And it's pretty, it's pretty special to think that, you know, the best he ever saw me do was, you know, 11 feet, four inches. I mean, or yeah, it was my junior year. So I think it was like 11, four at the time. And, or sophomore year, I'm sorry. And just how much I've improved in the past few years. And, you know, if he could see me now, like the- What, what was the vault that got you into the Olympics? Huh? How high was that? How high was the vault that got you into the Olympics? Uh, 16-2. Woo! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, and what was the highest number? Uh, out of, out of everyone. What was the highest number out of everyone in those trials? me yeah it was <laughs> nice. that's right representing right there uh but it's pretty cool to think he just he wanted me to be the best that i could be in any sport he would put me in private lessons for everything and so to think that the best that i could be is the best in the world and, and taking <laughs> shots at the world record like it's it's pretty special so <laughs> 
That's talk about the last year with that too, Katie, you know, you talk about like some of your personal growth and for you, it kind of sounds like it came later, you know, after your Ashland career with your now coach, do you think this, is it fair to say that this last year as tough as it's been for everyone, that it's been a little bit of a blessing in disguise for you? Yes. I say that completely. Um, I was really lucky and I, I'm aware of how lucky I was. Um, the situation that we were in down here, our training facility was just this old abandoned warehouse in the middle of nowhere. It was just a high school club that, you know, it was just our group. We could go in whenever we wanted with no one else there. So we were just in our own little bubble, just still training. And a lot of people did not have access to that. Um, but I would say I don't think it's a coincidence that I'm having my best year this year coming off of nothing but just solid training. Um, I think if in a normal year, I always get better after the preseason. And then with a lot of competitions, you have a tendency to revert to old habits. And we were really trying to change my technique. Um, and so it was getting better each year that I was working with my new coach. But this was like one extended preseason um, where it was just training throughout the entire year. And so having that, it was it, that allowed me to just make these new things just habit in a way that I'd never been able to do. And then this year, it was like all the old bad habits that we were trying to kick kind of worked their way out. And yeah, so I, I would say this year, this past year was actually in a weird way, the best thing that could happen to my career. And I'm, I mean, obviously I don't love the circumstances, but I'm, I'm very grateful that we were able to take advantage of the opportunity. Definitely. And the, and the circumstances definitely are strange. The one thing on Twitter that Chris and I definitely had our fun with today, have you seen the beds at all? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I actually, <laughs> I actually bought a mattress cover just to give it Interesting. extra support. Um, yeah, you never know what you're going to get going into a village from what I've heard. Um, so you want to just be ready for anything. But yeah, cardboard is a new <laughs> one. I, you know, financially, that makes a lot of sense since they're just going to, you know, get rid of them or whatever. But yeah, I was, I will say I've seen a video of, I don't know if he was a gymnast or what, but jumping on the bed and yeah. it was fine. So I was more worried about the throwers because these guys are enormous. They are massive individuals <laughs> that like, if they just turned their bed, would if they just lay down, I would be afraid their bed, bed would break. So I felt a little better after after he jumped on it and showed that it was okay. <laughs> yeah, supposedly it's like a big like recycled material thing. And that's kind of like the, the play that they're doing there too. Yeah. It's funny that your mind went to the throwers. My mind went to like the basketball guys. So yeah. like literally JaVale McGee who played for the Cavs, he's like over seven feet tall, like two cardboard beds for him. Like, Yeah, I mean, I don't know because I was asking my coach when I was buying it, like, is it a – twin XL bed like what do like because he's been there before he's like I doubt it so <laughs> these poor guys you know their feet are going to be hanging you know three feet off the bed <laughs> crazy uh, yeah dorm beds yeah maybe <laughs> well and in a normal year you know like those guys could afford to go to a hotel but right. we're not allowed to leave the village so they're probably just going to put the mattress on the floor would be my guess. I don't know. So you just assigned a room. Is that what you get there? Or do you have a roommate or how, how does that situation work down there in the village? Yeah. So normally, and again, I, I guess I wouldn't know in a normal year, just having sure. not gone, but you would get to pick a teammate, but they're going to assign you a teammate based on who, you know, contact tracing, whatnot. Um, so you will have a teammate or I'm sorry, a roommate, and they're actually going to be monitoring our phones. And so if your phone comes within six feet of someone else, uh -huh. you could technically, you know, uh -huh. be taken out because of you were too close to someone. So they wow. actually encourage you to bring six foot long charging cables so that you can literally keep it on you even when you're sleeping so that if you're charging your phone next to someone else's phone on the same stand, for example, even if you're six feet away, your phones are within inches. Like if they were to test positive, then you'd be in trouble. So it's, it's pretty crazy, <laughs> but the rooms themselves based on the pictures look pretty spaced out. So I think that's better than normal um, because in 
some of the room I, when I was at Pan Ams in 2019, they were pretty small bedrooms. <laughs> so that's incredible. Do you yeah. imagine you like you have to keep your cell phone because you can't get that within six foot of, of everything else. And God, not to make you nervous or anything or more things to think about. It's just amazing. Right. Those, that's the little crap you wouldn't think you'd have to think about. Here you are going for gold and you're worried about being six foot from another person's cell phone at night. And that's, I mean, that's why I said, like, I just, I'm anxious just to get there. Like, and get yeah. on, once I'm on the field, like, you know, obviously, hopefully, hopefully I make it to the finals. But once yeah. I make it there, it's like, okay, we made it. Let's just vault. Um, but yeah, there's a lot. That's, that'll probably happen. be where you're most comfortable, right? I mean, at this yeah. whole thing is, is when you're finally there and you're like, okay, here we go. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting and it'll be, if anything else, I can say I went to the COVID Olympics, which I think <laughs> is going to be, you know, only, you know, a very small percentage of athletes ever will be able to say that. So Absolutely. I'll take it. I'll take it any way I can get it at this point. No, you're but. you're getting the gold. It, it's it's happening. <laughs> we found the wood. We're knocking. We had a uh, live question on here. Ed in Columbus says, when she wins the gold, is Katie going to scream, Cleveland, this is for you? Oh, my God. <laughs> Do you understand? I have literally had that run through my head. Yes. I don't know who this person is and how they got in my head, but I was like, do I do that or do I? Will that make me? You do it. You do it. You oh. absolutely do it. <laughs> we will be going crazy from the bar at six in the morning. I mean, look, I've thought about it. I, <laughs> I will be honest with you that I can't believe they actually said that because that has run through my mind. I'm like, are people even going to remember? Like, but it's Cleveland, of course. If you do that, we will have a promo for the rest of the time on this show. It'll be, <laughs> it'll, that'll be in our show intro. Oh, yes. absolutely. All that right. will live on. That will live on forever. Done. I mean, gosh, I was just excited to be here and even get a follow back from from the account. So no. I could be on the show permanently. <laughs> <laughs> next level next level see that olympians are like wow finally i've made it to the top i'm on the show and i did it i literally <laughs> said to my mom my favorite cleveland comedy account one of my favorite twitter accounts started following me i've made it this is the peak of my career there you go so so let's go right there let's talk about the browns what do you think? <laughs> is it super bowl or bust for the browns every year is super bowl or bust That's for the browns <laughs> i mean hey <Dang> katie <laughs> No, I Great just answer right there. It should be right. Gosh, you're a competitor. Just, we expect the most out of these guys. It's so fun because it's been so hard for so long. Um, to and I, I mean, I have, as you, I'm sure you all have, just traveling around with athletes from different cities, different states. Anytime I bring up the Browns, I, I was in. Where was I? I did the pole vault summit in Reno, Nevada. And at the beginning, the elites introduced themselves. And, you know, I said, I'm Katie from Cleveland, Ohio, go Browns. And the entire auditorium laughed. And I said, why laugh? That? that doesn't make any Bastards. sense. And then they <laughs> laughed harder. Um, but I just. When was this? Was this recent? <laughs> it better not uh, be it recent. Was, it was probably three years ago. Okay. It was before All right, this That's fair. Year. That's fair. It, no, it was. That was Hugh Jackson. I was laughing. Yeah. Too. <laughs> but so, so then actually, I mean, we've been through it. We've been through the ringer. So then to actually be, we don't get to be bandwagon fans. Like that, that's right. no one can claim that I'm a bandwagon fan. So now that we're actually doing well, it's, oh, it's so fun. It is. It is. Do you, do you make it up to any games? I haven't. Actually, that's the one sporting Cleveland sporting event I've never been to is a Browns game. I've been in Mimi lot. I've oh. just never actually got to have her up to our tailgate. That's what we yeah, have. This oh is the my year. Gosh. There this we is go. The year. I would be honored. I would love that. <laughs> this is fantastic. This is going to happen. So I love great. it. Yes. Done. <laughs> it's going to be our year in so many ways. I can so just it coming down. All the ways I can feel it. So let's see. So when is your event for everybody who's watching? So that they know when to tune in. I know it's early in the morning, 6.30. We're all going to be having our beers. Yeah. We're so going to be the, eating our food of choice. <laughs> be watching you pole vault. Yeah. And when, and well, I guess it would be on what, NBC. So on NBC, when do we tune in? 
So there's a prelim and a final. Um, the okay. prelim is August 2nd. I don't expect anyone to get up early for that. Um, because oh, we'll be there. We'll be up early for that. What time is that at? Is it be four in the morning? Same. About the same. Um, okay. I'll post about it as it gets closer, what time it will be Eastern time. Um, my social media. So, um, but I, I want to say it's going to be around six something in the morning. Um, that, so they have, I'm not sure the total field of girls, but basically there's a lot of us that they narrow down to the top 12 or so. Okay. And so then, um, the top 12 then go on to August 5th and that'll be the final. So that's the big one. So the goal is first and foremost to make it there um and then after that all bets are off so it's fantastic this well, now is you've exciting got the show karma from us heck yeah great sure. <laughs> all right well we we kept you too long i know you're probably busy but no, you're good. this is awesome <laughs> yeah we really appreciate the time we're looking forward to all of that uh best of luck to you and we can't yeah. wait to follow along on this journey with you Oh, thank you so much. This is awesome. And we yeah. want you to come back on after you get back over here. After With Tokyo, the gold. We Done. want you to come back on our airwaves and tell everybody about the entire experience. Perfect. Will do. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, Katie. Thank you. All right, Thanks, Katie, Katie. Talk to you soon. Appreciate it. Bye. All right. That was fantastic. Katie Dejot. Future. I do not love her, right? Future I mean, gold fantastic. medal winner. I'm pumped for the Olympics now. You better be. Oh yeah. I, I I'm thrilled. I can't wait. Let's get up at six 30 in the morning and watch it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. God, how great would that be? If she, if she, if she wins gold, this is for you. Cleveland. The victory laps on this show. Man. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. Bring oh, it man. back to the show. Bring it back to the show. Yeah. No, that was awesome. Everyone follow Katie. Um, yeah, she's Twitter. a great follow, by the way, too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we had the name up, follow her. Um, all right. It is time. We're going to give away a Kevin Mack mini, jer mini jersey. <laughs> mini jersey. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I want to win one of those, Dave. <laughs> Fat man in a little jersey. You're going in a schmedium. Uh, no, it's going to be a mini helmet signed by oh. Kevin Mack in our Cleveland headlines. And then we are going flogsies. Let's kick it off and get into this let's do it three two one by the way chris were you I, I think i did a pretty good job bringing her in there 15 16 yeah seconds. that was way under 30 thank yeah. you nick thank you, you. Did. all right it, it's funny you mentioned bringing her in and, and to take everybody behind the scenes, you know, we have our notes here where we can kind of go back and forth. And Dave's like, hey, go ahead and take her out now. And I'm like, ah, I, I can't. I'm going to botch her last name. So Dave did the good job of <laughs> taking her out there. So Dave, you're awesome on the come-ins and come-outs. Oh, well, I, I greatly appreciate that. <laughs> you're a true pro's pro, <laughs> unlike me. <laughs> all right, uh, go check out tscleveland.com. Uh, all your Cleveland memorabilia needs. Anything you want signed, you can send in a personal item. You can do whatever you want. Um, check them out on Twitter. Follow us. Follow them on Twitter. Every Monday, your chance to win a signed jersey, mini helmet, actual helmet, Cleveland Brown stuff. It, it's fantastic. Uh, check them out and hope you guys win. All right, let's see. Who do we have for the winner here? All right, let me find a drum roll. Oh, that is weak. The winner of the Kevin Mack, not mini jersey, but mini helmet, Batman. Tim Tim Riggle, at Tim Riggle, R-I-G-G-L-E. Tim. Good job. Tim Riggle. Good stuff. Fine item right there. Heck yeah. Shoot us a uh, DM. We'll get that out to you here this week. All right, it is Flogsy's time. We've been sending out the polls all week for the different categories of the Flogsies. Chris, I believe this is our second year of the Flogsies. 
Yeah, we got to start dressing up for these. I was going to put a tie on. Agreed. But it just kind of looked weird. Yeah. Next year we'll pre- we'll prep a little bit more. We said that That's last right. year. So we'll, we'll blame it on COVID again. Yeah, it's COVID. Couldn't get dressed up. That's right. COVID. All right, so we are going to announce these. I believe the polls are just about ending. We didn't want to release the results before the show. So, of course not. First category, the best individual game performance of the year, the nominees Baker Mayfield at Cincy, five touchdowns, 297. Nick Chubb at Jacksonville, 144 yards and a touchdown. Shane Bieber with the unforgettable 14 Ks. Congrats to Shane Bieber, by the way, getting engaged yesterday, I believe, or this weekend. How about that? See those pictures sent out by at Indians? Yeah, very cool. Uh, Colin Sexton versus Brooklyn. That actually got my vote. 42 points, five rebounds, five assists. Game of the year, I would say. What round of the playoffs was that in? That was in the uh, uh-huh, what, six and 13, that, six and 14. That was a right? Tuesday in February. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you guys go with if did you did you submit your 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 ballot? It was a while ago. I think I went with Chubb on this, to be honest with you. Really? Yeah, yeah. You know, he, he, 144 yards touchdown. He's been and really it's it's kind of a season award. I know that's not what it's supposed to be, but I it was my vote, and I get to vote however I want to. That and, is true. Uh, I, I just felt Nick Chubb was just such an intricate part of the team this year that uh, I went for him with this particular category. I like that. I, I voted for Sexton. It was right after the Nets. Oh, like, you did. Yeah, I did. I voted for Colin. It was right after the Mets. The Nets made their stupid big three of Kyrie, KD. Yeah, I, Dude, I, I did too. And I was Chris. Sexton. I wasn't joking. I voted for Sexton Little in this Colin one. Little Colin Sexton beat those. Was this three. the second game we won? Because we won like the first two meetings with him, right? Was this? Yeah, the, but the one this Sexton was just the went game. Absolutely bananas. Yep. You guys both. Wow. God. Okay. At Six. least I went football. <laughs> Winner. But it's football. <laughs> I bet you're right. And that probably will go through all the way. Uh, 67% Baker Mayfield. <laughs> Remember that game, 21 completions in a row. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. How about Kevin Stefanski, basement Kevin Stefanski, first round of the playoffs? Yeah. That was probably the best individual performance of the year. That is true. Just really did a great job eating popcorn. Hearing his kids and his <laughs> yeah. wife upstairs yelling at the TV. Quiet. Like, oh, something good must have happened. <laughs> We've all been there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All the right. TV's on the delay. It's like, what happened? Yeah. All right. So congrats to Baker Mayfield. Single game performance of the year. Chris, you're up for the he's next He's probably one. a lot like Katie where he's like, that was the highlight of my life right there. <laughs> I love the, 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 the follow back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's right. Big deal. It's a big deal. Next category, boneheaded move of the year. There's a few of those. Boneheaded move of the year in Cleveland. I'll be damned, which probably makes it makes it about the boneheaded move of the year in the world. <laughs> Thankfully, we have less nominees than normal. Our nominees, Dave, are number one, Kevin Love's inbound pass. Yeah, remember that one where he just gave it up to the other team? Who were he playing in that game? How could you forget? I Toronto. believe it was the Raptors. Yeah. Toronto the, was the, Ca- Raptors. the Cavs were still in the running for a play for a play in tournament yeah. seed, and old Kevin Love got a little nutsy. I don't even and have then, to read any more. You don't have to read anymore. That was my vote. How about that was my Kevin vote Love as well. Going, be, being selected for Team USA. That could have been whoever. Are they quitting? <laughs> I mean, good lord. Really, Kevin Love 2021. Yeah, right. I mean, that game that I went to where he played three quarters, sat out the fourth quarter, had zero shot attempts. I, I was just <laughs> like, what am I watching with this guy? It's amazing. <laughs> really 60 is. million reasons why. Wow. Oh, my God. It makes wow. me sick. My number two here. Indians front office leaving Bobby Bradley. This is a particular favorite of mine. In the minors for Jake Bowers that's for that good, long. Bobby Bradley, of course, famously has now been kind of tearing it up with the big club. Jake Bowers, I think, is, I don't know, working at the sit go. <laughs> but uh, the fact that they didn't call up Bobby Bradley for Jake Bowers is just criminal. Yep. The number three, 
Cavs trading Kevin Porter Jr. What did we get for Kevin Porter Jr. here, Nick? You're the Cavs guy. <laughs> we got absolutely nothing, guys. We it was a nothing. conditional, a conditional second round pick, and the conditions on that said pick just just never came to be. So the Cavs got a big fat nada, as well as the Rockets are going to draft the guy that the Cavs wanted to take with the second overall pick. So Oof. great, great move there, Cavs. And how did Kevin Porter Jr. do? A few few games, man. And he looks like he's somebody who they're going to be able to build on and keep around for a while. That one hurts. Yeah. The last nominee in this category, the refs not calling the blatant helmet to helmet in that playoff game with KC really changed the entire course of that ball game. Of course, the fumble that shouldn't have been a fumble. It was head, it was helmet to helmet. The refs got it wrong. It was completely boneheaded, and I will die on that hill that we got screwed. Absolutely. That's my choice. And, Chris, who was the winner? And the winner with 57% of the vote, Dave, was the referees for missing the penalty, which cost the Browns Ah! that team just before halftime. Do you know who came in second? It better be Kevin Love. Kevin Love. Yeah, I was about to say. You know, Kevin it, Love. It, it had to be inbound. really, really bad, really boneheaded to lose to Kevin Love in this one. So good work, yeah. referees. Yeah. <sighs> well earned by the refs there on that one. I think they're going to be a multi-year winner in that category for as long as we continue this. They'll they'll continue to screw us over some way that pisses us off. Hopefully they'll, they'll be like uh as it was that time. They'll be like Pam, Pam's engagement in the office, the Dundies. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> yes. All right, Nick, what's our third award? All righty. Our third flog Z, guys. This is a pretty easy one and it's for the game of the year. The nominees are number 1, the Browns wild card win at Heinz Field against those Pittsburgh Steelers, who could ever forget the best NFL game that I've ever seen? Okay, we nope. can just stop there. I mean, if that doesn't win, then I'm quitting the Flogsies. Oh, but Chris, what else was there? Don't Nick? you forget about the Cleveland Cavaliers' double overtime win against the Nets' new super team, which I know is what also, you voted for. which was also Sexton's big game that I had voted for in the past. So could that have could I have paid my Twitter bots to go vote for Sexton? You were milking that Nets game, man. My number three that was the that was the most fun on a Cavs game that I've had in three years. Let me have that. Number three <laughs> is the Browns come from behind win at Cincinnati. I think that's an underrated one on this list, seriously. Completely agree. That was the one where everybody had us counted out. Odell went down. The morale at half was just straight up garbage. And then Baker came out on fire. The unforgettable touchdown pass to Donovan Peoples Jones. And the season from there forward really turned around. That's an underrated. Yep. And Nick, one. do you, and then the do you last- know what th- that game proved? Like, that was the first game for the Browns where you're like, we can actually win a close game. We, yeah. we never yeah, would win the close games. Also, fair foul to say that was the game where we walked away saying, like, okay, we have a franchise quarterback. Because if to that point, if yep. you guys remember, it was a little dicey. That was a, in the middle of the year. The bye hadn't hit yet. And it was like, what are we doing here with Baker? And you guys were you know, yelling and complaining. I had to defend Baker because he was throwing every other pass way too high. But then he came just dialed in in that second half once Odell went down and won us that game. And the season really turned around. That was the confidence for the fans. That's a big one. All right. Last but not least, this is a good game. I couldn't give this game my vote, though, because it was a loss. But really, the game of the year in the NFL last year was that Monday night football game. Browns against Ravens, the Lamar poop game, the Trace McSorley game, wow. the game where the Browns defense had to get rehauled this offseason, especially in the secondary, because those guys had no purpose being on the football field all together at the same time. That is the fourth option. Who'd you guys vote for? I voted not for Colin Sexton, but for that Browns wild card win in Pittsburgh. I would assume it's like 95% on this one. I would hope so. It's a little less. Ditto. But All right. No surprise here. The winner <laughs> with the Flogsy world record of 84% is the Cleveland Browns playoff win over those Pittsburgh Steelers. 
48 to 37 first right. playoff victory since 1994 and we'll never forget the iconic pictures of big ben roethlisberger silently weeping on the sidelines with his teammates all around him as the Browns were celebrating on our sidelines and their team went to their locker room. Big Ben just sat out there and sulked after what was a miserable game for him. That's the game of the year. That could be the game of, I mean, if 2016 didn't happen, that's the game of the decade. Have you ever seen a yeah. sadder sack? Than Big Ben. <laughs> no, I never, I never have. That I mean, was so sweet. If you too, look up sad sack someday, it's going to be <laughs> that, just that picture right next to it. I mean, man, oh man. Oh, have you ever seen a guy that knew he was just done in that moment? It was just like, wow. It, it was, it's undescribable. He had hurt us for so long, yeah. emotionally, physically, and we fi- we had the last laugh this year, and, and and I truly believe that. And you know they they could sign Melvin Ingram to as many veteran deals as they want to. The, the Browns are going to be good again this year, guys. How the turntables? <laughs> that is right. All right, our next category: Rookie of the Year. We've actually had some pretty good names for this, and in, in kind of all all the teams here. So Bobby Bradley, your guy, Chris, ten home yeah, runs, twenty win, RBIs. <laughs> Isaac Okoro, okay year. I don't. I guess he just made the list. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> he, <laughs> he was a rookie from all the teams. What? He was a rookie this yes. year, so he made the he list. He made the parameters. Uh, Jed Wills, 15 starts, four sacks, allowed one of the best out there on the football field. And Emmanuel Classe exceeded all of our expectations. 2.13 ERA, 11 saves thus far on the year. So especially after the suspension. Yeah. I mean, we were talking about, we're like, he's going to come back and throw 86 miles an hour. And he, yeah. If he can give us anything far surpassed. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. Who'd you guys go with? Bobby Bradley. Come on. <laughs> the assassin. <laughs> My boy. I, I actually went with Bobby Bradley as well. Really? I actually, Damn, I, went, you did. I went, I went Jedrick Wills. Jed wow. was the most penalized player in all of football last year man. Ooh, no one touched no stats one touched the quarterback stats geek stats advanced geek. stats over that actually yeah, you, really you know what advanced stat that i saw too bobby bradley hit 11 home runs really really far another advanced stat home runs average advanced stats <laughs> <laughs> all right the winner of this one was bobby bradley 56% Jedrick Wills. What? The Browns streak continues. Uh, Bobby Bradley had 30% second. 30%. 60% of you are idiots. 70%. <laughs> and that other 10%, you guys are just kind of in the middle. <laughs> Math. Voting a Coro. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, all right, Chris, what's our next one? <laughs> Breakout performer of the year, Dave. Okay. Breakout performer of the year. Who really took themselves to the next level here in Cleveland? The nominees are number one, Kevin Stefanski, the coach, 11 and five. And oh, by the way, won a playoff game from his basement. <laughs> that's a pretty good nominee right there, Dave. It's, that's going to be hard to beat. Number two, Darius Garland, averaging 17.4 points per game, 6.1 assists. He's a Cavalier, so therefore, I think I know where Nick's vote is going. <laughs> no, I will say he, sure. he turned it on. He's going to be a very good point guard for this team. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey we've got a young core. I like a lot of these guys. Yeah, I like a lot of these guys. Garland is one of those guys, part of the sex link. That's right. And number three, another guy from the trenches, Wyatt Teller. He began 2019 behind Eric Cush and worked his way up. One of the most yeah, underrated nice. Dorsey trades. Now this one, this one, I, I kind of disagree with him being on this list as breakout performer of the year. So when you think about that, it's somebody who wasn't very well known, all of a sudden comes up and has a <laughs> big year, or somebody who hasn't shown it had some potential. He does. This guy doesn't fit either of those. That's Brian Shaw. I mean, fantastic, fantastic year that he's putting together has been one of the stalwarts out of our bullpen. But 
we're very familiar with one Brian Shaw, and he's had his ups and his downs in Cleveland in the past. So I don't know if he's breaking out on anybody at this did, point. But did you expect him to be this good for the Indians? Yeah, I'd say comeback player of the year, but not breakout performer. I, I look at somebody on the way up. I mean, this is somebody just at the end of his career pulling a little Brady Anderson action and having a couple of good years out of nowhere. That's That's where I see this one. He does look like he should be playing old man softball with us. Yeah. Brady Anderson, by the way, he's like 60 years old. Do you realize? No, that? he's not. Yeah, he is. Nick, Nick can you record. fact check that? I don't believe that. Yep. Let's look it up. I just uh, had to give you an obscure There's name. no way. Brady Anderson. Yeah. Brady Anderson, age 57, born. Oh, Silver my Spring, God. Silver Spring, Maryland. Yeah. I just no made everybody way. feel old. Wow. How about that? That is wild. Do you know who his last MLB at bat was with? No. In 2002, your Cleveland Indians. I forgot about Brady Anderson. On the That's wow. insane. 57 years old. Yeah, everybody feels a lot older. 57. Yeah, doesn't that just blow your mind? I heard that over the weekend that somebody randomly brought up Brady Anderson and they mentioned Jeez. he was almost 60. Wow. It's like, no, that doesn't, that doesn't sound right. And I started doing the math in my head. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, I'm old. Yeah, 2002 doesn't seem that long ago. It seems like it was like a couple of years ago. It's true. So the winner, Dave, yes. for the breakout performer of the year with 45% of the vote. The winner is Wyatt Teller. The catalyst to the run game. Started 11 games last year. Was really one of those stalwarts there in the trenches. So fantastic. Second place in this category went to, I think everybody would guess this one, Kevin Stefanski. He got a third of the votes on this one. So that same 70% of people are still dumb. I almost I went Kevin Stefanski, but the tellers want to come on the show one week. So I, I went Wyatt Teller. Oh, well done. Well done. I went Stefanski. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I, I had to. After it, It's kind of like the quarterback thing in Cleveland. You know, Now that we've got a quarterback, a franchise quarterback, like appreciate it. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. We had Hugh Jackson. I mean, the, the laundry list of bad coaches in this town is long. And to finally get one, like, appreciate the fact that he, that was a breakout performance by a coach. Heck yeah. Now you'll get the people on Twitter like, oh, he's got a loaded roster. Anyone could do this. <laughs> no, no, Who no. Cares? So did Phil Jackson with two different teams. I don't give yeah. a Doesn't you matter. A win against a bunch of chips. That is absolutely correct. Nick, what is our next category? All righty. Our next category, this one should be pretty easy, guys. Right when I name the category, you should be able to think of the winner. Our next category is the picture of the year. And our nominees are Baker Mayfield and Hollywood Higgins, Red Carpet Walk, where Baker acted like a photographer for Hollywood as he walked across the red carpet. Not only was that a photo, it was a GIF in a video that you see everywhere still. Better just than a photo. The photo is unbelievable, by the way. But just the way yeah. that Baker comes in for that and makes that turn, it's like, holy crap, how much have you been practicing this? That was incredible. So great picture, better Jeff. Our next picture of the year nominee is Patrick Carney subbing in for John Adams. The Black Keys drummer sat in for John Adams for the Indians opener so we could have that sense of normalcy at Progressive Field. Somebody playing that drum up in the bleachers. I felt like that didn't get enough run. You know, that was a really cool thing. Agreed. Yeah. They did there. And it just didn't seem to really get a lot of momentum. A lot of people didn't realize the significance of that. And I, I really think that was due more than what it got for whatever reason. So that's a pretty cool moment. Here's one that received plenty of due, Chris. And it is the famous photo. We've talked about it before. Big Ben Roethlisberger crying, sitting on the bench after the Browns-Steelers playoff game. You see the red eyes, the tears falling down the cheek. And then our last The, the best part of that is, is he's just looking forward, just like, what am I doing with my life? He's having an existential like, crisis right there. And you could see it all in his eyes. It feels just so good, man. So good. Just, 
So good. It, that that picture will live on forever. A lot of these pictures will die down. You know, they're memes that we use a lot now, but we'll forget about them with time. Yep. Same thing with like little, little LeBron taking the photo of like the really bad Cavs team. But that picture of Big Ben, man, that's one that we'll look up back on, like the like the Turkey Jones, you know, sack picture. Yeah. Like it's it'll just live on forever. LeBron Ultimate Warrior shirt off yep. the plane. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All righty, our last nominee for this one, this is a cool one too, is Jose Ramirez staring at Miguel Cabrera. Cabrera said something that Jose didn't like. The Indian social definitely got a, a lot of use out of that one of him just like oddly staring at Miguel Cabrera on the base. But this is an easy winner. With 68%, the Flogsy goes to... That's it, Chris. It's Big Ben crying on the bench after losing to the Browns in the wild card. I was surprised only 68%. Yeah, of that I was one. just going to say that. It's hands down the photo of the year. I thought that would be in like the 90s. Yeah. Who came in second on that category? Do we know? I believe it was the it was the Baker and uh, Hollywood that, Higgins. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. That's the only thing is you get when you get Browns against Browns. Sometimes that'll split the vote a little bit. <laughs> that is true. All right, final flogsy of the year is athlete of the year. This is a tough one. We got some athletes in Cleveland. The nominees, Baker Mayfield, 3,500 plus yards, 26 touchdowns, eight interceptions. Nick Chubb. Wow, when you write it down, 26 touchdowns and eight. only eight picks. A little better than the year before. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I haven't really thought about those numbers in a while, Dave. That's well, the Browns that's... look good on paper, Chris. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, that might sway your vote right there. Nick Chubb over a thousand yards, 12 touchdowns, 5.6 average yards per carry. You look at that on paper. You say, why didn't we run him more? We've had those conversations. Colin Sexton, 24 points, four and a half assists, three rebounds. And Jose, 272 batting average, 30, what, six home runs last year, I believe it was, uh, and 98 RBIs. This is the closest flogsy, by the way, that we had tonight. The winner, 47%. Any predictions? I'd say Baker. Right, yeah. go Baker. This is a you know, like I was saying about quarterbacks. We love our quarterbacks in town. That's right, Nick. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta think the same. It's a, it's a quarterback town. We made Bernie Kosar an icon here. The winner, and rightfully so. Before you start down the, no, uh, the absolutely. Yeah, right that was a little bit of a downplay by Nick. No, it there. wasn't. A, it I, wasn't I was going to say we're going to a dark place there, Nick. You want to step no. outside for a little while? No, Bernie Kosar is an icon. I'm just saying we we made the quarterback position an icon in Cleveland with him. Correct. All right. The winner is. He got my vote. Nick Chubb. Okay. Takes, Once again, the Browns vote split. I think. Did all of these go to the Browns? I think they all went the to Browns the Browns. Had a, the Browns had a clean sweep clean of sweep. the Flogsies this year. Wow. That is actually not that surprising. No. But Nick Chubb deserved that award too, right? Like Absolutely. He made that offense go. And it was a fun, fun offense to watch. And we can't wait until it happens again this year. Congrats to Nick Chubb. You'll get your flugsy in the mail. We have a uh, producer, Nick, making them now. So look, look forward to that. And that uh, is the flugsy. I'm still on video right now. Yeah, you're, look, you're, you're looking a little... Little yeah. uh blurry there. Yeah, my you, screen just went black. Yeah, your no your your internet's starting to fade, and he's gone. He gone. He gone. <laughs> the Flogsies, and that will do it. Flogsies, and that. And Chris McDeal has left the building. Everyone. Oh boy, let's see. Hold on, let's see if I can do this. All right, you're gonna be Chris. Oh, hey, Big Nick. <laughs> Gigantic. <laughs> All right, we're going to do best and worst tweets of the week. Hold on. Chris is trying to come back. One moment. Let's see if he comes back here. At least he made it through the flogsies. 
He's trying to connect to audio. Had to leave the we studio. Got Katie, we got Katie in quicker than we got our own show host in. <laughs> oh, Chris, trying to connect to audio. His internet was just going, man. I just saw him. He was, like, he was like, dot, 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 dot. <laughs> it's always the snowball effect, right? Like, you can see it happen, and there's nothing that you could do nothing to stop it. Nothing you could do. The internet's just going to go. All right. He, I, I, don't, I don't see him joining. He's trying to connect, but we'll we'll see. Chris, you have to turn the camera on. All right. Best, best and worst best tweets. Best and worst tweets. Let's get out of here. Ooh, where are you? I have no idea what this is going to look like. All right, we'll just leave the tweet up. So many best tweets this week, Dave, but the best of them all. How about a series win in the Bay Area? Shout out at Indians. Something about Cleveland teams winning a series in the Bay Area. Heck yeah. Just just sweet. That's our best tweet of the week. That's a good one. Uh, Worst tweet of the week. Uh, Let's see here. Who is this going to go to? Ah, yes. Evergreen. Darren Ravel. <laughs> Hard to, to not pick a Darren Ravel tweet as the worst tweet of the week every week. I love that Nick at least breaks them up. You know, he doesn't constantly give us Darren Ravel tweets because this, this segment could just get very stale. Oh, yeah. So what, what do we say here? So all the wide angle shots of Giannis block do a disservice to how amazing the block was. Look at the close up. Crazy speed they play. In the moment where fouls are especially precious, he stuck his hand through Aiton's for the block. Better than LeBron's famous SWAT. What an idiot. <laughs> like, all right, you take that much time to make us read through your little, uh, you know, very, very nice narrative there. You brought a poll. Just to get to, to better than LeBron's SWAT, you're just looking for clicks. Congratulations, Darren. You're an idiot. Yeah, and we gave it to him. But we did. You know, that that block, Dave, I got to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> that that block had me wishing that the Bucs would lose this series. I was seriously hoping Are you that serious? the Phoenix Suns. It doesn't look like it now. I, I wanted that so badly for the Bucks to lose that series. So the Giannis block doesn't carry the same weight as LeBron's block. Cause now are we going to look to this block in game four of the 2021 NBA finals against the Bucks and the Suns, And people are really going to try to compare it to LeBron's. No, that's why I'm, I'm still no. pulling for the Suns in seven. I, I just want the Suns to win just because I like, I like Booker and I like Chris Paul. Yeah. But yeah, but screw that block too. I hear you. I hear you. Chris just tried to join again. Leave him out. <laughs> Leave him be. Chris, you're okay, man. You're okay because this show is over. Uh, huge shout out to everyone in the comments. Thanks for look at all those comments. We had a ton of comments tonight. Um, fantastic stuff. Keep those going each week. Makes the show more fun every week. Huge shout out, Shack News. Go check out the video game reviews. They saved me a bunch of money on my purchase that I did not make of Mario Golf. Got a bad review. Didn't buy it. Uh, check out the Twitch channel. Awesome live video game content all the time over at shacknews.com. Go drink a Labatt Blue. They're super delicious. I do it all the time. Golf course, beach, pool. Make it your summer drink. We don't have that much time left. Um, who am I forgetting? Katie. Fantastic, fantastic interview. I cannot wait to wake up at six in the morning to root her on. Couldn't couldn't it's gonna be awesome. couldn't happen to someone better. Uh gold medal all the way. Here it comes. Cleveland, this is for you. Boy, Katie, that's Katie Najat. Can't wait. Olmstead Falls. Go Bulldogs. And we will see you guys next Monday for another special interview. Gonna be a whole lot of fun. See you guys then, 9 p.m. on Monday. Nick, say goodbye to the people. See you, everybody. We'll see you next week. Good interview. I've heard, I've heard things that are good. Look at you we'll teasing. You
Okay, do you need medical attention? Yeah. What what is wrong? I don't know, I know that damn doctor. Cut back by job, he's to the ten, he's still coming to the five, he did some time, let me do it in half Yeah, 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 yeah.